And we are live. I believe. A bit blurry. Let's pull this down a bit. Let's try it. That is better. Or is that worse? Good evening. Good evening. How you doing? Let's put the old bins on. I'm in a little bit of a dungeon in the corner. <laughs> Be all right. Be fine. Good evening. Good evening. Can you see me? Can you hear me clearly? Because after last week's misdemeanor, two weeks ago, Daniel Young, good evening. Jimmy D, hello. Mill KP, Bobby Darling, it's Venom. Theo Hanley, hello. Can you all hear me, boys? Can you see me? Can you hear me? It doesn't look the best visual, but... There you go. We go, we go with what we got in a minute during these difficult lockdown times. Levi Betts, hello. B Lion, yes, sir. Jimmy D. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. We'll wait for a few people to come in as usual, and then we will crack on with the show. I've got to the point now I've had to put product in my sideburns. They've got that long. Horrendous times in my life. Um, Levi Betts says loud and proud. Loud and proud. Proud. Steve Johnson, hello, mate. How are you? Hogan Olsen, hello from Denmark. Good evening, sir. Good evening to the Scandinavian... I say home counties, but that wouldn't be right. Hello, anyway. How are we doing, everyone? How are we doing? Been playing Warzone. Nice to hear something about football. Simon Ford, are you it? Good evening, boys. Okay, and girls, if any girls are watching, but no one's commented. 31 people are in. So, as obviously, as usual, we will talk just quickly about yesterday's game at the Den. Any news we have for the upcoming fixtures in six days' time. Football is back. And what is that? Is that on my T-shirt? Is that on the screen? No, it's on the screen. All right. Don't worry about it. Anyway. So, yeah, good evening. Uh, I better do a bit of an intro, and I'm so rusty. It's a joke. Lens TV, we are sponsored by Regal Elevators and Lifts. Consultants Limited, a company that is owned and operated by a Millwall fan, just like every single one of our other sponsors. If you are going to do a bit of business in this craziness that is 2020, then please keep it in the Millwall family by checking out all of our sponsors' website links in the description below at the end of the video as we are live. Good evening. How are you? Good to see you all. Good. To, well, I can't see you all, but you can see me, unfortunately, for you, as I was just saying, that the lockdown barnet's out of control. I've had to run a brush and put some product and hairspray into my sideburns. I'm desperately trying to find a hairdresser, but uh, that's my own personal problems. Let's talk about Millwall yesterday. There was a behind-closed-doors friendly at the Den, which we won by four goals to nil against Colchester. Two goals from Ryan Leonard and a goal apiece from the deadly duo at centre-half, Sean Hutchinson, and Jake Cooper. Jake Cooper also signed a new long-term deal yesterday at the club, following him joining from Reading in 2017 and has now played something like 117 games straight every minute of every game. So good to have Juicy Jake extend his, um, extend his career, his contract at the den at least. There's definitely interest. I know, I know for a fact there's definitely interest from, from big Premier League clubs. So it's good to get Juicy to... Um, sign up on the long term and if nothing else if we do sell him eventually which I believe we will maybe not today maybe not tomorrow but um, we'll, we'll get some good dough for him good bit of business by the club and good to see Juicy's all for it and he wants to stay on as well so it's all good we won the game missing by four goals to nil Ryan Leonard plays plays like a 10 in behind Matt Smith I I do know the falls ins and, ins and outs of what happened but I'm not going to say it because obviously the club yesterday don't think they wanted to I'm not sure if they wanted to actually say the result yesterday or what. They sort of they drip, they drip fed us what was going on. So, a little bit of a strange one there. But, yeah, we did win the game by four goals to nil. Uh, confidence is high in the camp with the players. I can tell you that much. Um, and they really believe they can make the playoffs. I'm now looking at it thinking it's a unique season. Nothing like this has ever happened before. Will again. It will be very mere war. And you can guarantee it's nailed on that we'll now probably make the final at Wembley. Um, and I can't see why not. I really can't see why not. We're on to Derby, of course, next Saturday. Mason Bennett will be ineligible to play against his parent club. But I'll get into that, the greater depths of it, this week. Uh, just for those who may not have seen my social media post earlier, 
Lions Lounge lockdown, love doing them, but they take a lot of time. It probably takes me to track the players. Then I've got to interview them. That, that's, that's time in itself. But to get it right with the clips I want, export them all off YouTube, put it all together, it's probably about six hours start to finish to, to, to do an edit. So they will continue. That show will definitely, definitely continue. It won't be stopping, but it won't be as frequent as it was during lockdown. We'll probably minimise that to one a week. And I'll still try and do these live streams because – they seem to do. Um, they seem to do well. Lewis Hardy's just said, but Vardson's looking like Modric. The one thing I did think when I looked, some of our players that maybe aren't fancied as much or haven't fulfilled their potential so far. Um, Conor Mahoney, that's in that bracket, and ones I'm not too keen on. But Vardson and Leonard, they look like new players. The opposition must be shitting themselves with them new. Them new Barnets. They just makes them look like, like uh, someone just said there, makes them look like Modric. Makes them look like European players. So, yeah, um, interesting. Steve Lees, good evening, mate. How are you? <coughs> so, yeah, that's all, that's all the news I've got. And as of next week, pre-match prediction returns. Um, fan score prediction returns. Uh, fan cams over Skype. We're going to do um, post-match analysis. We'll also do a watch-alongs with me, a few of me and a few of the Lions TV will believe... <laughs> me and a few of the Lions TV boys will be getting together at points and... We might even do like watch along games. There'll be plenty of content going out with nine league games slash 12 if we do make the playoffs and the playoff final. But Ryan Leonard yesterday, listen, again, if you saw my social media post, what we've got out of Ryan Leonard as a player in terms of what we paid for him is nowhere near enough. But let's look at some other players. Players I've criticised, uh, Marlon Romeo, massively thrived and improved defensively under Rowett. One player I've always backed, and I sometimes the flip side of me, Sometimes I'll say a player's not great and I'll get a grief for saying that player's not great. I always say Sean Williams is brilliant, brilliant mill player. I could watch I could watch Sean Williams play football all day long. He plays the game where I love to see it played. And I sometimes get hate for that. People will say, oh, you, you and Willow sit you're sucking each other off. You and Willow doing this, you're doing that. So, no, we're not. But I think on the flip side of that, a lot of Mill fans now have seen how well uh, he has, he's improved even further in my book. And I can see a lot of Mill, mill fans have seen... Williams has improved under Rowett. So let's hope, let's hope that Leonard does. Leonard should come back now. Leonard came to us and he wasn't great. But he wasn't that bad. He had a long throw that we used to use and then we stopped using it. He wasn't, he wasn't short of confidence. Remember, he, he lobbed Bolkowski, didn't he, for Ipswich, uh, against Ipswich, sorry, at the den. And he wasn't afraid to shoot. He, he said it could go up for um, Lee Gregory when we come back, back from 2-0 down against Forrest. So, um, so, yeah, like Leonard, but then he seemed to – he went off the boil. He just doesn't do enough for me. But I'm hoping now, with the new Barnet, the new man bun, in, in the role, uh, uh, sort of behind a striker. And let's have it right. But, you know, as much as we loved Harris, we didn't play a lot of football. It must have been frustrating to be a central midfielder under Harris. He was constantly doing that. Ball's going over your head. So now we like to get it down and play. <coughs> Excuse me, that's not Corona. That's the fan on me. If I get cold air, keep blowing on me. It gives me a cough. So, um, B. Lyons says, yeah, he, he did score one banger. Correctly so. So, yeah, let's hope so. Let's hope. Let's get behind the boys. As we said, nine games to go, potentially 12. Um, yeah, that's it. You all know the result. The the, uh, the club posted the goals this morning. Uh, Leonard's second goal, very good. Other goals in there, as, as we'd expect, strong at set pieces like we are. Good to see that um, that hasn't dwindled away and we're still razor sharp. The boys are confident, as I said. And I really, really am. Although it's behind closed doors, listen, it is what it is and there's no point dwelling on it. It is behind closed doors next Saturday. We are back in action against Derby at the Den. And the games will come thick and fast after that. I think they'll be done in six weeks, something like that. I think the playoffs start end of July or something like that. So we'll have six weeks to get the games knocked out. We've got plenty, plenty of players fit. Again, Jason McCarthy's back. Leonard, obviously, is back now from um, injury. Uh, Thompson was. I don't know why he wasn't playing yesterday at some points, but um, that's all I'll say on that one. So, yeah, let's have a look. Um Mill KP says, don't forget Colchester is League Two team. Well, I don't I hear they didn't offer much, but you got you can only beat what's put in front of you. So, you know, you can only beat what is put the opposition is there. And, and we did a good job, 4-0 demolition. So that's um if you want to count the uh, Forest game, which was a hundred days ago today, by the way. That's seven goals in two games and two clean sheets. So we will take it. Right, let's move on to I've got it there in my notes. It just says Sunday show. I fucked it up a little bit because I've gone all out and I've bought, gone up, I've, I've done the budget and I bought a massive. I can't even get in the shot. Look, I bought a massive whiteboard 
Um, but what I've done is I've wrote this shortlist on the whiteboard, which probably wasn't the right thing to do. I should we can write the final team on the whiteboard and have the notes here. But anyway, listen, it is what it is. I'm sure we'll get through it. This was a difficult one. Uh, first of all, by the way, I'm just going to mention this again. I'm getting frustrated, but I shouldn't. But people don't read the fucking post that I put out. Read the post. I did it earlier, and I said, here's a shortlist for tonight. Some geezer put, no, what, no Ian Dawes? What's wrong with you? I said, well, no, nothing wrong with me, mate. Ian Dawes is, is English, and it's a non... Read the fucking post. Non-UK 11. People don't read the post. It's fucking like catchphrase. They just say what they see. So some of the stupid comments that people not reading what I'm putting out really frustrates me. And it shouldn't. Another thing, a geezer commented on one of the YouTubes last week, and he's like, oh, right. Why is it only 1985 to 2020? That's not our problem. It's your problem. I said, well, sorry, pal. Clearly your problem because it's my fucking YouTube channel. So it's my rule. So if you don't like it, don't want to watch it. It's not compulsory. Switch the channel over and go and watch something else. The reason I do these teams 1985 to 2020 is as follows. I this Lions TV is a channel massively forged on Millwall fans giving their opinions. Now, I can't give my opinion on anything pre-1985 because I wasn't fucking born. I remember I was born in 1980. I start, first went to the den in 84, 85. Remember parts of it. I probably remember from sort of uh, the season we was in the top division on one, sort of 88, 89, which would have made me eight, nine years old. If someone said to me, Dan, comment and, and, and advise me and produce a show on who won Crufts in 1943, I couldn't do it because I've never watched Crufts in my life. So, so I feel invested in the show and I feel like I can give you the best show possible and everyone can have the best opportunity and we can get good feedback, good good conversations going. I've got to have seen these players play. You know, I know there was other players and I fully respect and, and, and I enjoy looking into previous Millwall sides before my existence, but I can't comment on players I have not seen play. It is that simple. So that's the reason I do from 1985 to 220. And some guy was fuming and I just said, well, it's not my problem, mate, because it's my fucking channel, my channel, my, my rules. So there you go. So today I thought, right, we'll do... Um, we'll do a non-British 11. Now, this is at the point where I thought to myself, am I thick? Because I did a little bit of research and I sort of knew this, but I didn't know the exact way it was. England, Ireland, sorry, start again, see? England, Wales, Scotland, Northern Ireland are in Britain, okay? Republic of Ireland is not part of Great Britain. Repub uh, the Republic of Ireland is part of the UK, but obviously ERA is a Republic of Ireland. So I thought, right, I'll do a non-British 11, which means I can incorporate the paddies, right? But then when I looked at it, it's going to be a little bit too much players we've already discussed it before. Kenny Cunningham, who we were interviewing on Tuesday, by the way. Robbie Ryan, uh, Alan Dunn, Stephen Reid, um, Richie Sadlier. There's, there's others. that Everyone's just came to my head. David Ford. So I thought, respect to the Irish boys, there's so many of them that maybe we could incorporate them and that we could call it Paddy Power, a Mirwall Paddy Power 11. There you go. And we could have we could have all them boys in, including current players, Sean Williams. There's a lot of good Irish players that have been at the club. Northern Irish, Joe Dolan, Shane Ferguson. I'm saying Shane Ferguson for you lot, not for me. But um, So I thought, well, okay, so let's not do it Irish. Let's get away from it and, and really delve a bit further and do a full-blown non-UK 11. So there's no English, no Irish, no Scottish, and no Welsh at all. And then at a later date, um, maybe next week, we'll do a Millwall Paddy Power 11 or something like that. Might even fire into Paddy Power and get a bit of branding done. Earn some cash. Hashtag pay me. Right, but anyway, um, that's the rules, okay? 1985 to 2020, and it's a non-UK 11. So anyone that's not within the UK. However, off the top of my head, Tony Warner, the strongest Scouse accent you've ever heard. Blatant Englishman, loves England, went to the World Cup of him. But he played for Trinidad, so he's, Trin he's Trinidadian, okay? Uh, another example would be um, Paul Eiffel, obviously. Barbados, he played for Barbados. So if a player was born in a country that wasn't England, or they represented a country that wasn't England at international level, then they can also be in consideration for this eleven. Final one before I start, because it's been 14, nearly 15 minutes and we ain't fucking done anything yet. Um, I struggle with this a bit. So what I've done, as, as you know, I do three players in each position. What I've done in this instance is there's a couple where I didn't fill them up, fill up the amount of players we needed. 
And what I'd do is I thought I'd give you boys the opportunity to throw a player in and then we can vote from there as well. So let's do it. Uh, all time from 1985 to 2020, Millwall, non UK 11. Okay. So we're going to, we're going to go 4 4 2 because we always do. I'll, I'll just say one more thing. I'm, I'm very happy to, 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 to have chats in the comments. Mark Paris, there's one. Hello, how are you doing? But when you vote, when I give you the, the three names to vote, can you just, just try to just vote a name? Because I've got to go back through and count them, and it makes it a lot easier just to count them. And then um, we'll discuss it afterwards, the players that were in there, before we move on to the next position. Fucking, it's supposed to be fun, this, and I'm actually I'm absolutely barking orders at you all. <laughs> but um, I just want it to work well, and it will work well. The last time we put out the worst of the level went very well. Uh, that was that was good. That's funny. Gareth Gardner. Hello, mate. How you doing? Right. So, the goalkeeping, as I said, I took the paddies out, but the goalkeepers was um, was one we've sort of been down this route, this route before. Funny enough, the only goalkeeper that had to drop out was David Ford, obviously, because he was Irish, and Brian Horn because he was English. So, you have three goalkeepers for a best Millwall foreign 11 since 1985 to current day which is Sunday, there's something of something in June. Um, Casey Keller, America. Bart Balkowski, Poland. Tony Warner, Trinidad. Vote. Just give me a name. Just give me a name. And just, the, and again, people are saying other names in the comments. I've tried to pick the best players. There's been other players, and we could talk about the other players afterwards. But for now, Casey... I want to get the best, the best foreign eleven, the best foreign. Keller, Bar, or Warner, vote. Casey Keller, of course, um, made our all-time eleven, which is the first, the first one we did in this series, the first episode, and it's looking like Casey um, is going to win again. I like to look at these because I like to obviously everyone's different like, different ages, and there is no right or wrong answer in this scenario. Tell it, David Brent. There is there is no right or wrong answer in this scenario. Then we'll tell you the right scenario afterwards. Um, so yeah, three fantastic goalkeepers: Bolkowski, current goalkeeper of course, Casey Keller uh, in the nineties, and Tony Warner late nineties, early noughties. Might have joined in two thousand actually. Warner or ninety nine? It was around that. <laughs> So, um, William Hollis said, did Keller play in the Premier League? Yes, he did for Tottenham and Fulham. So did Tony Warner for Hull and Fulham. Bolkowski has not played in the Premier League. But um, Keller did play in the Premier League, yeah, for, for Spurs and and Fulham after he left Millwall. Right. So just keep it to the name, yeah? One name, one vote for each person. And I can tell you, but quite convincingly, well, he's actually oh, Steve Lees. Well done, Steve. Legend. Thank you, mate. Steve Lees has told me Casey Keller's got 15 votes, Warner's got five, and Bart Bolkowski has got three. Yeah, Connor Tobin says, Am I missing something? Non UK. Yeah, because we've done we've done the best eleven. So now we're going outside of English or basically the best foreign imports meal we've ever had. There you go. And to epitomise that, if you could put that in a bracket, if it's in the dictionary and you said best non-UK export uh, import meal we've ever had, Casey Keller once again makes the all-time non-UK 11. USA, baby. The American with the mullet. Right. And, and by the way, as I say, we might do um, Irish only because even even from right-backs Irish, we had, we had two or three very good right-backs. So we'll move on to right-backs. And again, I shouldn't have wrote it on my fucking whiteboard. Just keep having to refer to it down there. Right, we're going to go right backs now. Again, difficult, but free. It's going to be it's going to be difficult to pick one here, and you could pick all three for all different reasons. And the three right backs to choose from is current Millwall right back Antigua and Antigua and Barbuda, Marlon Romeo, Kevin Muscat, and Lucas Neal, both obviously Australian. The best non-UK right back meal we've ever had. That's my bottle opener gone on the floor. Marlon Romeo, Kevin Muscat, Lucas Neal. Vote. Romeo. 
current Millwall right back. Kenny Cunningham's Irish. Can't have Kenny Cunningham. Kenny Cunningham, we're going to do an Irish 11, a Millwall Paddy Power 11, another time. From the three names I've given you. Here we go. They've got the hang of it now. Romeo, Lucas Neal, or Muscat. Me personally, I love Marlon Romeo because, he, because he's a current player. Not in the same league as Kevin Muscat or Lucas Neal, though, if I'm honest, in my opinion. Uh, Lucas Neal, very talented player. Muscat just won our bastard and just epitomised everything that Mill was, was about. Yeah, Dave Griffin correctly says, Muzzy for his leadership. Well, not correctly, in your opinion. Lucas Neal was a better player than Kevin Muscat, but if you want, you know, who was your favourite? I don't even care who you thought was better. Who did you love more? Again, you know, Romeo, it's very good for Romeo to be mentioned in this bracket, but for me, no way. Nowhere near the other two. Muscat, Romeo, Neil, Muscat, 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 Romeo, Neil, Muzzy, Muzzy, Simon Ford, Muscat, Alan Smith, Muscat, Mark Paris says Romeo, Daniel Young says Lucas Neil, when Lucas was a fucking phenomenal player for us, by the way. Uh, I might be tempted, if he doesn't make it to right back, uh, Lucas, to put him in further down the line. Marlon, he's good going forward, though, says William Hollis. Yeah, he is, mate, but unless you've seen what a lunatic Kevin Muscat was and what a great player Lucas Neal was, Lucas Neal was even better than Marlon Romeo going forward. Total football, Lucas Neal. What a player. But listen, this um, my this is this is your vote. You 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 choose who you want to choose. This is not my decision. The shortlist is my decision. Um, but I don't think I get the shortlist wrong often. Other than maybe putting Ryan Leonard in the worst 11 last week. That could come back to bite me in the ass. Right. The scores are in. Steve Lee, you're lying to me. Muscat is not... Romeo's not winning this. Yeah, Alex Smithson says... Lucas Neal is better by a country mile. Marlon Rome Best foreign import for Mill at right back. Marlon Romeo, obviously, yes. Again, I'm not going to get into people's lives and where they're from. Is he English? He's, his parents, obviously, are, are not English originally. I don't know whether Marlon was born in England, but he is a international footballer for Bermuda. No, it's not Bermuda. Sorry, Marlon. It's fucking um, Antigua and Barbuda. Antigua and Barbuda. I think I've got that correct. Um, Mick Robinson correctly says, well done, Mick. All three brilliant for me. All, and I'll add to that, Mick, all in their different ways as well. <coughs> Muscat won 14 11 with Romeo. Steve Lee says Romeo's dad is Jazzy B from Soul Soul. It is correct. Sits next to me at the den. Back to life, back to reality. Elliot says Muscat won 14 11 with Romeo. And again, look, Luke, I don't think I don't think time has been Lucas Neal's friend there. Because he was brilliant, but obviously it was it was I think he joined the club 97, something like that. Muscat only played a few games, um, but he was a short-term legend at the dead, without doubt. 50-odd games. It, if I had to pick one, I'd probably pick Muscat, if I'm honest. And then Lucas Neal, for football-wise. And Marlon Romeo, listen, it just tells you what the other two are about. If Marlon Romeo, in my opinion, can't get to them, those two's level. But I'm taking Elliot underscore seven's word for it. And Kevin Muscat goes in. The Aussie. Okay. There we go. Um, similar to Muscat, Steve um, Steve Claridge only played a few games. They're sort of short-term impact legends at the den, aren't they? And brilliant, brilliant players. I'm, I'm, I'll be honest, so far, I'm happy with that so far. Right, left-backs. Left-backs, left-backs, left-backs. Now, this, and as well as other positions, I did struggle a little bit to... To think of, I could think of foreign left backs we'd had, non UK players, but I was trying to think of some really good ones. So I've narrowed it down to three, and I'm going to explain to you why each one has made the cut. Um, James Meredith's made the cut. Don't vote yet. I'm going to just tell you why. Um, James Meredith's made the cut because he had a brilliant first season for us, and he, and he fell away badly in the second. But I, I liked Meza. Uh, he was brilliant in the first season. I'm not sure what, what grabbed hold of him in the second season. <laughs> but um, yeah, so. Also, left backs. All three are Australian, by the way, as well. Um, Australian fullbacks seem to have cropped up a couple of times in this. Sorry, so amateurish having it down there. I don't know why it's down there. It should be here on my notes, but there you go. I fucked up the day. I'm only, I'm only human. I'm only Ricky Newman. So, 
I'm just going to tell you something before people jump down my throat in the comments. Jason Van Blurk signed for Mill from Go Ahead Eagles, a Dutch side, in, I think, 1994. He was a left-back, but Ben Thatcher came through and he couldn't get in in front of Ben Thatcher. So he played further up the pitch. He played further up the pitch for us as a left midfielder, but 100% he was a left-back. So he's in it. The other, the other guy I've gone for at left back, I don't know why I'm looking down because I know his name, I've got it already. Uh, and, and I'll always love him for a, a brilliant goal he scored against the Anoraks, an absolute rocket of a fucking 40 yard free kick at the, at the Jimmy Seed End, where it was called. So the three players to vote for in Millwall's best ever non UK left back. It's a three way battle between the Australians Jason Van Blurk, Shane Lowry, James Meredith. And if I've forgotten someone there, then I apologise. You can pull me up in the comments. If someone can think of a better foreign left back we've had. But Larry was decent and he's going to win this vote. I, I would have thought so. Van Blurk, as I said, was signed as a left back. Could play left back or left midfield, but his actual position was left back. Um, Mesa hasn't even had a vote yet. It's going, to, it's going very close here between Shane Lowry. It's not so close now, actually. Lowry's pulling away a bit by the look of it. But yeah, Shane Lowry... And could, could, could anyone think of a better left back there? But better fucking fire engines. Could anyone think of a better non UK left back? Because I couldn't. I couldn't think of one. That's the best we got, in my opinion. Yes, Joseph Sardina says it's hard. Look, as again, I could have incorporated the Irish in this. But I just thought this, this make it a little bit harder and a bit more difficult. Carlos Edwards was a right back. Um, Carlos Edwards was a right back I'm sure I also thought of um, Sean Cummings a right back but ne neither of those two were in the same bracket as a three I named so Shane Lowry's won that convincingly by the way and, and again in my opinion rightly so we've got an American with a mullet in goal we've got a lunatic at right back who's Australian and we've got a lovely one that left back uh, a few votes for Jason Van Blurk I think Jason Vlerk 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 we have a bit cold lager and sort myself out. It's actually not so cold. He's been sitting here all now. Jason um, Van Blurk. I remember fondly. I remember fondly from sort of the late 90s FA Cup run, 94, 95. I don't think he was that good. In fact, I think I sold this story many a times. My old man Stern Lynn used to go, he's fucking useless. And Mick McCarthy wrote an article once in his pre-match notes saying Jason Van Blurk likes to put his foot on the ball. I remember my old man just... Uh, lost his shit. Lost his shit. Like, what sort of winger puts his fucking foot on the ball? You want people to go down the wing and fucking put a cross in, which is true. So, um, sentiment-wise, I agree Van Blurk should be in there, but he wasn't as good as Lowry. So, we've got our fullbacks right now. I'm going to put the pick this up just to make it easier. Could I bought a bigger white ball, by the way? I couldn't fucking... I said to Mini Me, we'll have a nice walk up, up, up the shops in a minute. Get a little white ball for tonight. Only giant ones left. Right, okay. So, centre-backs. Again, originally, could have put Irish in, so it was great. And, you know, there was plenty in there. And I decided to go without the Irish contingent. I struggled for centre-backs. And as you usually know, we've got two. So, I don't, I don't actually know how this is going to work. And this could be chaos. So, you, we've got three centre-backs and three centre-backs. You usually have six. But I can only think of four. Uh, and the four centre-backs I could think of was Zach Whitbread, USA, Danny Shitu, Nigeria, don't vote yet, don't vote yet, Pat Van Den Howe was Welsh, but actually born in Belgium, and jo and again, another guy who scored a, a goal against Cholm, which I'll always remember, Josh Huveld. Can anyone else think of another centre-half, non-UK? Because we've only got four, we really need six, but we'll go with a four if need be. So, um, if can anyone think of any any non UK central defenders that we all have had between 1985 and 220 that we can sort of throw into the mix? Because I couldn't think of any others other than Whitbread, Shitu, Vanden Howe, and Whoville. Richard Shaw's Jamaica. Uh, Rocky Banana says, was Witter English? I looked that up earlier, mate. Yeah, he was English, yeah. Um, right, so let's go with these four because I think, to be honest, for me, there's two clear people there that should be in it anyway. Um, and you're all saying it. 
it should really, in my opinion, you know, all right, so this vote, vote for two of these four, Zach Whitbread, Danny Shitu, job done really, isn't it? And Pat Van Den Howen, Josh, Joss, or Josh Uvild, I can't never, never been able to say his name. So, sorry, everyone's commenting, it's holding it for a review because you're all saying, you're all saying Shitu, and the, obviously the, the, the bot, the YouTube bot thinks you're all swearing. <laughs> so I'm going to allow your messages. Shitu, 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 Shitu and Whitbread, Shitu and Whitbread. Hassan Cool says Jus Hoveld. Yeah, I could, is that? I think that's a. I think I said I, wrote, I said it as you wrote it there, mate. But yeah, I, it's what we do. She says Harry Lavelle Baker. You're not wrong, H. Shitu. The amount of messages I'm having to accept here on the comments because everyone's saying Shitu. And it's again two good players. Um, Zach Whitbread. It's funny. I don't remember him being American. For some reason, I thought he was Australian as well until I looked today. But good player. Went on, didn't he leave us and go to... We got him from Liverpool on a free, I'm sure. Um, and then I think, after that, didn't he go on to Norwich? Had a good career at Norwich after that. So, again, letting more comments in. No contest, says Archie C. Oliver Smile, Mark Paris, Joe Vine, Mill KP, Archie C. Shitu, Shitu, Danny Young, Whitbread, Foss29, Shitu. Mick Robinson is still wearing my Shitu t-shirt. That's what we do. Norwich, you went to Norwich after, yeah. So there you go. It's, it's unanimous. Ah, there you go. That's, that's a bit of an interesting one then. Hassan Cool, Cool. I hope I said that right, mate. Apologies if I haven't. Whitbread was a scouse yank. Yeah, it was... Um, I, I, I thought he was Australian. I remember he wasn't obviously completely English. But we definitely got him from Liverpool on a free. That, that, again, that was... Another video we might do further down the line is, you know, best transfers or best, you know, money players we got in best, best free transfers and things like that, or best players we got in front under an X amount. And and he could definitely be in that bracket. Hassan Cool said he came from Liverpool. So obviously he had um, American heritage, shall we say. But he, did, he does look a little bit, I think, because he looked like a little bit of a surfer dude with like his bleach blonde, bad mullet barnet, whatever it was. Um Mil uh, B Lyon says, yeah, he did well with Leicester as well. Shih Tzu and Psycho, Van den Howe. I'll put Pat, Pat in because, again, only to be honest, I was struggling for centre-halves, but just because of some of the stories you've had off from Lions Lounge lately, um, and that really did make me laugh. So I'll just put Pat in for the crack, really. Welsh, yes, but born in Belgium. And I, I didn't know that, but I just thought Pat Van den Howe. That's a very complex and different name. So I'm going to look that up and see... I wrote shit to then. <laughs> I'm sorry. I wrote shit to. So we've got a back four and a goalkeeper. So what I've done is I wrote the players' names and in brackets I've, I've, I've abbreviated their country. And I've written shit who's full country because I've written it and then you can see I've written not meaning anything by it. And I thought, oh, that'll fucking get me in trouble if I do that. So I've obviously written in his country in full. So we've got a back five. Casey Keller in goal, the American. There's another American that joins him at centre-half slash via, via Liverpool with the American scouts and Zach Whitbread. Alongside in Danny Shitu. That is what we do. Always remember that the club fondly. Another one didn't play a massive amount of games. But again, will always be remembered for captain in the club. So the 2013 FA Cup semi-final against Wigan and the quarter-final obviously scoring a winner in the replay at Blackburn. Shane Lowry and Muscat are our fullbacks, two Australians. Two Australians, two Yanks, and Big Dan, the Nigerian. Makes up. That's a good side, to be fair. We have any side at the minute? I will put it on the whiteboard at the end. Not a bad side at all. Mini me, side? You don't know any of them players. You weren't, you weren't born. So Mini me's just chilling on the sofa over there. He looks like he's really enjoying himself. Boy, he's going to have to get up in a minute and get me a cold lager. <laughs> Right. Oh, got it right. Hassan Kuhl. Yeah. Got it right. They're not good. Oliver Smile says, does this include loans? Um, yeah, it does. It, if they play a decent amount of games, and you'll see why I've said exactly that further down the line when we get to the strikers. Um, Joe Vine says he was born in Texas and then moved to Liverpool not long after. Oh, nice. That must be. Do you ever think like look at them Wikipedia's and think that must be a fucking very difficult transition? Why was that decision made from his parents, Texas to Liverpool? 
Well, it's, it's still probably hillbillies everywhere, but a different type of hillbilly in Liverpool. <laughs> in Texas, it's like Texas Chainsaw Massacre, like cowboys, isn't it? And you got Liverpool, and they're still, they're still, um, they're still chavs in a way, but they just nick, they just nick your tyres off your motor. I hope Tony Warner ain't watching this. Joe O'Mara is happy with his defence. Uh, Joe's just joined, probably taking a break because earlier on, I put this on the group chat, the Lions TV group chat, and said, "Boys, short this for tonight." But we don't fuck around with these things at Lions TV. It takes some planning. And uh, I was having a bit of a meltdown because I was saying, "Good foreign players you've had, good foreign players you've had," and they kept saying, "Not so good foreign players." So I said, "Good players only, you." And I can't say the word because um, I can't bleep it out because it's live. But it's the one word that I have to bleep out during an interview. So can, that'll give you a little bit of an idea what I was calling them all earlier, even though they was being good enough to give me their time. Uh, and it made me think maybe we didn't have that many good foreign players down the years. But listen, Casey Keller in goal, uh, USA. Kevin Muscat, right back, Australia. Danny Shitu, Nigeria, centre half. Uh, uh, Zach Whitbread, he said Adrian. Centre half, USA. And Shane Lowry, left back. Uh, I'm pleased with that. That's a good side. It's good. And, and again, um, yeah, it's your word, KP. You know it is. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm pleased with that side. And I'm, I'm extra pleased now that I didn't put the Irish contingent in because, as I say, they can have their own show. And I think if we'd have had Irish there, you know, you could have had already, you probably would have had Kenny Cunningham at right back or Alan Dunn. You would have already could have possibly had some other centre arse. You probably almost would have definitely had Robbie Ryan at left back even David Ford in goal. So I'm, I'm pleased we stepped away with it and we've started with what we've got. Oh, there's so many people watching. So if you have just tuned in, thanks for watching. Thanks for tuning in. We are now going to move into the midfield. Right. Again, some of these decisions will be easy, but it's just nice to talk about the players. It won't be difficult decisions. So I like to do three players in each positions. Okay. As you know. Now, left midfielders, non-UK left midfielders. And this, again, was another reason I took the paddies out because straight away you could have had Mark Kennedy, you could have had Stephen Reid, and we're talking about and praising all the same players that we usually do. And I want, it to, I want it to go a little bit more in depth. I want it to be a little bit more, you know, in detail, more random Millwall players that we've had down the years because we've had a few foreign imports, but we've not had many great ones. So left midfielders, I can only think of two. Um... So if anyone can think of another one other than Christoph Kinney or Michael Jilks, again, I'm pretty sure Kinney will win it anyway, no matter who he's against, because we loved him. But any other left, non-UK left midfielders, Yuri Skalak, but they've got to be good as well. <laughs> and, and he's a right midfielder. Left midfielders, non-UK left midfielders that played for Millwall between 1985 and 2020. Luke Smith said Anton, Anton Alawowski, Alawowski. Again, early was brilliant, but I never saw him play. I'm sorry. Lucas Neal can play anywhere. Millie Coomley correctly says, Millie Coomley, yeah. Um, why are people saying Skalak? Skalak's a right midfielder. Um, what was I going to say then? Someone, Lucas Neal can play anywhere, and that's why I might throw Lucas Neal... Um, Further in. Anton was English anyway. Yeah, I did hear that. So, right, let's just listen. Left midfield. Michael Jilks was a great player, but not by the time he got to Mill. He represented Barbados. And Christoph Ole, 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 Kine. And Kine, through Lions TV, is a personal friend of mine now. And he's a fucking great guy. He's fucking hilarious, Christoph. And we're going to go and see him again soon. Uh, once his poxy lockdown is over. So I think it's going to be unanimous. It's going to be Christoph Kine. In at left midfield. Um, what I will do, we'll throw someone else in. So yeah, it's all it's all in. Lewis Hardy, Kinney, Joseph Sardena. Sard I always got to say Sardinia when I say that because I've been to Sardinia. Luke Smith says Kinney all day long. Lewis Hardy, Kinney. Millie Coomley says Kinney easy. And I'd agree. The first. You tell me, what country are you from, Christoph Kinney? And and City. I know the answer to that. Just see if you know. Let's make this a fun and history lesson as well as as well as um a Millwall history lesson. Let's make it a geographic and historical country lesson. That doesn't even make sense. Correct, Millie Cumley. 
Christophe Kine is Belgian. The first Belgium to make the cut in this all-time. Not all-time. 1985 to 2020. Going back further anyway, I don't think you'd find... You'd, you know, the further you go back, foreign players wasn't really a thing anyway, so I don't think you'd find many. Joe Vine says, some shit all that. What, what, where is that? Belgium via France. Christophe Kine is Belgian. Um, and I should know. Uh, Liège, yeah, he's from Liège. He lives in Liège now. And he, start, um, he started his career. Mark Paris correctly says Kine. Right. Now, right midfielders. Let's go right midfielders. <clears throat> and what I'm going to do, I'm going to give Lucas Neal a second stab here. Because he... he if you had to put a Millwall, you had to name the, the top, probably top five ever Millwall imports. It has, it has to be, it has to be fucking, uh, sorry, I'm reading all the names on the stream. It's gone blank. Lucas Neal has to be in it, but he isn't. So we're going to go right midfield because Lucas Neal could play left midfield. Lucas Neal could play right midfield. Um, he could play central midfield. He could play right back. He could play anywhere, Lucas Neal. That was half the glory of him. But... The three right midfielders are Fred Onyedinma, Nigeria, Paul Ifill, Barbados, or Lucas Neal, Australia. B Lion says you can't leave Ifill out for Neil. Well, you, it's your decision now. It's in your hands. Vote the best right midfielder non UK that Mill have ever had. And Paul Ifill's in my top three all time Mill player. So that, tell, that gives you an indication. Ifill. Someone said, what about E.T.? E.T. was a central midfielder. And he's in the central midfielders. Um, right midfielders, I feel. Fred on your dinma. And Lucas Neal. Yeah. I feel no contest. Steve Johnson, I feel. Lewis Hardy, I feel. Archie C., I feel. Daniel Whitnell, Alex Smithson. It's, it's a clean sweep for the trifle. Daniel Young says Lucas Neal. I might make Lucas Neal like player manager because he, he, he deserves... It. A Millwall import 11 without Lucas Neal in it is, is not right, but there you go. Really, at the same time, Muscat, you can, you know, arguments for him as well. <laughs> Daniel Griffith said, you couldn't take your eyes off, I feel. When, and I was thinking, what, me personally, when, when I interviewed him, because I was a little bit like, just like gazing at him like, like I was in love with him because he was my top three all-time players. Daniel Whitnell says, Lucas Neal should have gone on the left wing vote. Uh, true, that is true, and and you could you could be right there because I just really want Christoph to be in it. I got to be honest. But there you go. He could he should have really gone right back in front of Muscat. I suppose if you're going on talent, it's again you know as I said, it wasn't his um, it wasn't his you know time isn't on his is on in his hands. It isn't his favourite because he's the furthest back out of those players. So Paul, I feel. Comes in, you know, again, Paul, I feel, is from Brighton, but he is also, has Bayesian, I think they call it. You've been to Barbados, haven't you? Do they call them, they call people from Barbados Bayesian. It is right, yeah. So, yeah, Paul, I feel, his dad from his Barba is from Barbados. And um, Daniel Beresford said, Daniel Benford, Lucas Neal was a left back. There's one thing Lucas Neal wasn't. He probably could have played there. But, um, yeah. Again, you've got to look at uh, Paul, Paul I feel He's obviously, his mum's English, his dad is, is Bayesian, and he played for Barbados national side. You can't have, um, you can't have any arguments with it. Right. Central midfield. Millie Cumley says, I feel can't be in it. That's a joke. Well, no, because I have to have some structure and some rules. Now, he, he doesn't matter where he was born. He plays. Zach Whitbread was, lives in fucking wherever he lives. Danny Shit, who is pretty much English, just have it right. Paul Ifill, his passport, he's from he's, he's Barbados. That's where he's from. So it is what it is. Um, but there you go. Again, and again, the vote was in your hands, not mine. And I've not even got the central midfielders yet, and I can see people putting, <laughs> putting the answer of what it should be. 
So, central midfielders. I'll throw Lucas Neal in again. Um, <laughs> Uwe Fuchs, you rude little prick putting me in Mill's worst 11. If only it was you, Uwe, I'd come and apologise to you in person. Paul Worrell says, I would play Lucas Neal at number 10, but what are you going to do? Take, take Tim Cahill out? Or should we put Cahill up front? But then that's... Right, I, I've got an idea of what we could do, actually, Paul. You, you're not you're not far off there, mate. Right. So, because we haven't got great forwards, okay? So this is what I'm going to say for this, and Paul's right, and a few of you are right. We haven't got great forwards here, right? We've only got really one good forward, and he was a lone player. <laughs> so we'll keep him free. Right, so this is what we're going to do. Tim Cale is going to get a pass directly in. Tim Cale's in. As a 10, yeah? That's what we're going to do. Tim Kale was going to be in as a 10. Okay. And then that means he can't be central midfielder, okay? So your central midfielders, you can pick four. So you can't pick four. What am I talking about? You can pick two central midfielders, okay? Tim Kale has got a pass. He's going to be the 10. So we're going to go four, five, one, because our forwards are shit. So forget Kale, he's in the team as a 10. The two midfielders I need, the choice of four. Again, Mark Bertram plays for Canada. I know he's not Canadian, but he's plays for Canada. Jimmy Abdu, the Commerce Islands. Jimmy Abdu. Etienne Vivia and Lucas Neal. Because Lucas Neal could play central midfield as well. So Mark, so basically, Mark Bertram ain't going to get in the side. Let's have it right. So you can have two of these three to go in central midfield. Etienne Vivia, Lucas Neal, and Jimmy Abdu. And, and Kale is going to be a 10 behind the front one. E.T. and Jimmy. E.T. and Jimmy. That's I'm, still giving, I'm still giving people the opportunity to put in Lucas Neal. People still ain't doing it. Jimmy and Lucas. Paul Delafina says Lucas was quality. Dan, I agree. E.T. and Lucas Neal. Someone's, Daniel Young's left out fucking Jimmy Abdu. Abdu. Abdu and E.T. That'll be an interesting combo. E.T. and Jimmy. Lucas Neal and Jimmy, says Paul Wassell. Mark Parrish says Abdu. Harry Lavelle Baker, Abdu and E.T. I always think you sound like an actor. I must have said that before. Harry Lavelle Baker, pleased to meet you. Jimmy and Neil. E.T. This is going to be very, very difficult. This is going to be very, very difficult to count. This is why I don't do two at once. Right. Jimmy Abdu's in. I'll tell you what. By the way, this is a fucking good side. And he's from the Comoros Islands. Right. So let me show you what we got so far. We got back four, we know, right? I stuck Kale was a 10. Abdu's in. So this midfield place, right? Stop voting for a second because Lucas Neal could sit. As a central midfielder, oh, listen, I don't care if Lucas Neal gets in the side or, or not, okay? But people are saying to me, it's bollocks, he's got to be in. But I'll give it, you've had two opportunities so far, vote me and you haven't. So we're going to say, who would you want to have? Etienne Vivia or Lucas Neal to play alongside Jimmy Abdu? Vivia or Lucas Neal? Vote. George Savile is. is, is, is Millie Coomley saying, Bertram in the middle over Lucas Neal. Are you mad, bruv? E.T. or Lucas Neal, I've narrowed it down to. I mean, I listen, I, again, I loved it. I love, I love, I loved E.T., but it's not on the, um, he's not in the same bracket as fucking Lucas Neal was, is that right? Alex Smithson says, E.T. went to Aberdeen. Lucas Neal played in the Premier League. Yes, don't forget he played for West Ham as well. Someone else just said that. Joe Vine, yeah. Lucas Neal or Etienne Vivia to play as the holding midfield player. If you put... Well, it wouldn't be holding because Jimmy have to be holding, but... Um, K-U-N-A and E-T in midfield for us. That'd be interesting. Yeah, just listen. It don't matter who went on to play where and who played for who after me or play If you could have Etienne Vivia or... Lucas Neal in your central midfield. Who did you enjoy watching the most? Who did you like the most? You know, it doesn't got to be necessarily um, 
who who is standard wise better? Why do I not remember this Fabini? Everyone's saying Fabini. Who the fuck? Are you? I don't remember him. Oh, he's so close on the vote. Is anyone counting by any chance? Steve Lees might be counting for me. Kieran was counting for me last seven. Kieran, nineteen eighty-seven, I think his name was. <laughs> Millie Cooney says I'd have Lucas. Uh, you know, I appreciate your comments. I don't understand what people are saying. It, it must be frustrating because it's frustrating for me because it's not in my control. And it's, there's things I change in here, but it's not my decision. Millie Cooney says Bertram was a ball winner. I'd have Lucas left back and fuck off Lowry. Lucas didn't really play left back though. Played more right back and then went into midfield as he got older. He probably played left back at some point. He used to play left mid. Six for ET, 11 for Lucas Neal. Steve Leeds is a legend. Um, and Lucas Neal makes. The, um, the team. Tim Cale's in, as we said. Lucas Neal didn't start as a left back for us. He's right back. He's right footed. Good with his left foot, but he's right footed. Lucas Neal's in. Okay. Right. Lucas Neal is in. Now forwards. It's going to be a whole new. It's going to be a whole new pun that we're just about to have. Because forwards was a difficult one. So just while I'm rubbing out everything I wrote on the whiteboard, <coughs> you lot just tell me. Yeah, Elliot's got it already. You just tell me some good non-English strikers we've had. Some good non-English strikers we've had. Well, you've all thought the only one I could really think of that's any good by the look of it. They've, uh, again, I'll, I'll get onto this one as well, by the way. Um, Barry Howes. Sorry, I'm just rubbing out what it's on the whiteboard. Barry Howes. I see a f someone said it on the, the video we did last week, and someone said it today to me in that in the Lions TV WhatsApp group that Barry Howes was shit. I must have been watching something else because I thought Barry Howes was very good for us. I, I remember a brilliant day out I had with a few of my mates. We went, um, Derby away over Christmas one year. Drove up there, like roads were quiet. Stops at MS, got a crayfish and rocket sandwich, and Barry Owls scored an hat trick at what was then Pride Park. We didn't get many away, away wins at that point, and we didn't definitely score many goals. So for me, I thought Barry Owls was very good for a score against West Ham, didn't he? Puts one up against the, the Amers at fucking Upton Park. Um, but again, listen, and you're all right here Stefan Meyerhofer, Bob Peters. Um, Darius Henderson's decent. I, I think he's English, though. Um, John Kurt, they, these are all Ricardo Fuller. Yeah, people are laughing as they're saying them. Stefan Meyerhofer, a, a lot, a fucking lot of in, um, foreign forwards, but they're all fucking useless. So, in my shortlist, John Fashion, who was, uh, I didn't see him play, but English, um, Alex Smithson, Diccio, I did check that because Big Danny Deach, as like myself, got Italian heritage. So I got I got it down to a short list of five. Danny Dicho is actually English, um, although he is you know he's, he's got Italian family. He's actually English um, because I, he was going to make the short list because again my short list was and by the way the first one was a good player for me a wall but doesn't really deserve to be making an all time eleven I think because he, just, he didn't score enough goals and he played for the club towards the end of his career um, and that was Dave Mitchell, obviously Australian. Uh, Barry House, Jamaica. Darren Byfield, Jamaica. John Kerr, USA. I mean, again, on the flip side of me saying that Howells was good for us and Kerr wasn't, a lot of people think Kerr was good for us and I didn't. So, um, and the other one, for me, the most obvious one, and again, I'm not deciding the vote, it's your show, so you choose, but Chris Wood was by a fucking country mile the best we ever had. And it, it was New Zealand. And yes, he fucked us off and, and joined um, someone else, can't remember who it was. We got him on loan from Leicester, I think, didn't we? Unbelievable. He scored two goals one night at Brighton. I was in the Brighton end that night, actually. They threatened to throw us out because we, we cheered when he scored his first goal. And then we they went, don't do that again, mate. We'll have to throw you out. And then we sort of jumped up. We couldn't. Was, the second one was so good, we just jumped up. We couldn't help, uh, help it. So Chris Woods, loan player for Millwall, scored a lot of goals from New Zealand. Wasn't at the club that long. Fucked the club off to sign for someone else offering him more money. But surely he's got to be in it, hasn't he? You just tell me who's the best. Who's the best? Mark Kim Grant. <laughs> Kim Grant came from Charlton, didn't he? 
Kim Grant actually scored for Charlton against Mill the last time they beat us at the old den in 1995, I think it was. And it's snowing that day. I know a lot for someone who's only been going Mill all year, don't I? Wood is from New Zealand. Right. Uh, Darren Huckabee was English. Um, came from Lincoln. Joined Newcastle. Got loaned out to me a wall. Again, exactly the same situation as Chris Wood. Done well for us. Someone else fucking bought him. Sorry, Wood was loaned from West Brom and signed to Leicester. I knew it was something along those lines. Um, Dave Mitchell, Mick Robinson said he still likes Dave Mitchell. And I, and I agree. Carlos Fandiango. Fandingo. Fandingo. Definitely Chris Wood. I mean, look, he, he's still playing now in the Prem and he was a fantastic player. So... Let's put it where it should have been in the first. I can move the microphone. Can you still hear me? Hopefully. Right. So let's go through our team. As selected by you lovely lot from a shortlist supplied by me. In goal, Casey Keller from the fucking good old nutty turnout, US of A. Apologies to any American fans watching. At left back, Shane Lowry. Scored a wonder free kick for Mill. Had a peach of a left peg, almost as good as mine, against Charlton in a 2 0 win, 2013 ish. So I noticed you for that. Um, centre half next to him. Centre half next to him. Centre half. There you go. We're always learning, and I've learned something tonight. Zach Whitbread, the Texan from <laughs> the Scouse Texan. USA, born in Texas, moved to Liverpool, came through the ranks at Liverpool. Mill signed him on a free transfer, I believe after he played in us, against us in a friendly. Mill KP said 2-14. Yeah, I know it was around that time, mate. Um, and good business for the club. Got him from Liverpool on a free, ended up selling him to Norwich. He went on to have a good career. Next to him, a player that will always be remembered in Millwall. You know, he wasn't the greatest when he came to us. He's towards the end of his career. But he just epitomised it. He just got it, didn't he? He just got it here. And that is big Danny Shidu, who is Nigerian. And at right back, another player that will be uh, remembered fondly for his tenaciousness and his mere wallness more than anything. A brilliant right back as well, by the way, and was, was very thick as thieves with Dennis Wise. And that was Kevin Muscat. We're moving to the midfield. I'm over the moon he's got in there. He didn't have a lot of competition. It is the Belgian wing wizard. My mate, Christoph Kinne. What a guy he is, by the way. Um, central midfield. He got there in the end. He did deserve to be there. He was very versatile for Millwall. Could have played anywhere. Um, and he's got into the team at central midfield. Again, come through the youth system. Went on to play for Blackburn. And uh, unfortunately, West Ham. Good career in the Premier League. Now, allegedly, it's alleged. He's gone off the radar. I can't find him. He's, he's gone bankrupt, apparently, Lucas, Lucas Neal. So, better footballer than he was a businessman. Let's put it that way. Next to him, the first the first player you probably think of when I say I was going to do this video tonight, the best uh, non-UK meal player, the most famous, the one you think of first. The one you think of first is surely the one I thought of first, and that is Mr. Nab Jim Abdu from the Comoros Islands. I can't write the whole islands in because it's too much space on my new whiteboard. Uh, right midfield, a few people are not happy about this one. He's in the all-time Mill 11. He's in my Mill all-time top three. Paul Eiffel is a Barbados, was a Barbados international. I mean, I'm not being, you can't say I can't, you can't have him in, by the way. I mean, look, I actually I get on well with, and we were talking about this in his, in his interview, funny enough, I didn't put it in because it was, it was a bit controversial. But you've only got to look at, look at the man to see he's not completely English. Come on. Um... Right, in a 10, I'll tell you what, we didn't mention him. He just got a gimme and got straight in the team. But it's only, it's only, whoa, there's only so much you can say about him, by the way. Um, Tim Cale, possibly the greatest, the greatest fucking discovery ever by us. Come to the club, come over from um, Australia. I think his nan and granddad were, 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 were Millwall fans or something like that. Stayed with his nan, went to the club, can't have a trial. And the only, dis the only disappointing thing, two disappointing things about Kale was, one, we got ripped off selling him to Everton, and two, he didn't score when he came back, which would have been brilliant. It was great to have him back. 
but went on to play for Everton. You know, he's just he's a little bit of a, just a fucking worldwide ambassador now, and he's just into everything on, in, on social media and uh, Sky. He's just like a complete perfect man, or so his Instagram would have you believe. I'm not saying anything to the contrary. I don't know him personally, but he just seems like the perfect man, Kale, doesn't he? And it all started for Timmy at Millwall. Um, and up front, as a lone striker, the last man to make the team, from New Zealand, by the way, Chris Wood, um, plays up front by himself with Tim Cale sitting in lovely behind him. And I've got to tell you, people piping up about Brian King was the best keeper we ever had. <sighs> Don't waste it. Don't waste it. What, by the way, I will do is I will do our best all-time 11 mil team, no matter what year. And I'm going to fucking delve back into the ar ar archives and pull out people like Jack Cock, who you've never heard of, too many goals he scored. And we can't remember any of these players, so it won't be any fun, but I'm going to fucking do it. And we'll all be sitting there and bored for two hours. But anyway, tonight, I'm going to write it again, just so, oh, never forget, best, non, in capital letters, UK, Millwall, 11. Someone will still say, what about so-and-so? Why, why is he indoors, not right back? Because he's not fucking English, you thick bastard, right? <sighs> breathe. Breathe. Just stick the same people. Just make them smile. I'm glad we didn't go to the paddies. This is a hell, a hell of a side. Fucking could have got a bigger white ball, couldn't I? Hang on. Now I can't talk. Let me put the mic here so I can hear what I'm saying still. How's that looking, boys and girls? That way a bit? I feel like I'm holding up one of them fucking golf saddle things. <laughs> Look at that. I'll tell you what. That is a very, very good team, and I'm very pleased with that. And I've enjoyed your company tonight. We'll have a little chat quickly now in the comments. Let's have a look at the comments. Is there anything that anyone wants to discuss about those players? Memories out of those players? Here goes. Should have just showed you that version. That might have been easier. I could have stayed on fucking short my own show, couldn't I? It's a good team, though, isn't it? Yeah, people are saying it's a good side. What do you reckon that side? All right, see that team there? What do you reckon they're doing there in the champion? Could that team there... With every player there at their best, that team could, I'm going to say it, that could compete in the Premier League. Jimmy Abdu is French, but he was from the Comoros Islands. He's not English, just put it that way. Um, he is a good team. Um, Christopher Sipowitzki, wow, pulled out of the bag first time. That's what four stellars are do for you. Um, Derby prediction, that'll be out on Thursday, mate, on the channel. Normal service resume next week. Casey Keller in goal. Muscat right back. Larry left back. Danny Shitu and Zach Whitbread center halves. Paul Eiffel, Jimmy Abdul, Lucas Neal and Christoph Kinne across the midfield with Tim Cale just behind Wood. It is a fucking strong team, that. And, I'm, and I'm, again, I'm glad we didn't put the Irish in because, again, as I said a million times, we can do it in a separate show. But that, that's really um, that's really helped expand our bracket there, hasn't it, by not putting the Irish in. And it's, it's, it's given us a very good side. People are asking for subs. Um, <laughs> I've, wiped, I've wiped all the fucking shortlist off the, off the, off the board now but um, and a manager okay Joe people, people just um, are people just trying to people asking about me doing other shows here by the way um, so we've done so far a Mill will best 11 1985 to 2020 we've done a Mill worst 11 1985 to 2020 and now this is the third in that series best UK non-UK 11 um, so the, if you haven't seen any of them ones before have a look uh, Joseph Sardena says we need subs and they've held that for review and a manager okay so let's talk who do we want who do, I'll tell you what who do you want on the bench it's your bench it's your show who do we want on the bench Mill KP to be the manager wait I'm going to have to see your passport mate going to have to see your passport it depends again this is a diff another good question manager who could be the manager? You're Jamaican. Are you really? No, you're not. Don't lie. Um, Alex Smithson, he wants Dave Mitchell on the bench. And I'll back you there, mate. I'll back you there. Dave Mitchell, for me, is, aside from Chris Wood, the standout centre forward. Um, 
Dave Mitchell's on the bench. Who else didn't get in there? Probably should have got in. We need. We need. A, a, should we put Bolkowski on the bench? For goalkeeper. I'm going to put Bart on the bench. A sub keeper. Anyone else? We'll stick Bertram on the bench and all. And you want you want Marlon Romeo on the bench? Fair enough. There you go. Marlon's on the bench. I've put Bart on the bench, Balkowski, Bertram, Marlon Romeo. Um Archie C, you're, so you're saying uh oh, Danny's Daniel, why are they why are they holding your comment for review? Daniel Benford correctly says Danny Salmon. Now Danny Salmon was a was a right back Cypriot born um in in this time when I very first started going Millwall. Great player for Millwall. Um but for some reason, when I've done these two shows, he seems to have escaped my memory. I was I was very young when Dennis when Dennis Salmon was playing for Millwall. But listen, no doubt to be to be respected, a great Millwall player. Um We'll put Dennis Salmon on the bench. We've got two right backs, but as we know, and we love him for Marlon Romeo likes to bang, bang on, uh, bomb on, sorry, not bang on. Um, so people saying Fred, I don't think Fred would. Yeah, no, Fred, not for me, really. I put I put salmon, like as in the fish, instead of salmon. There you go, I've corrected myself. Right. Our subs are Dave Mitchell, Bart Balkowski, Mark Bertram, Marlon Romeo, and Dennis Salmon. I am now challenging you. Uh, again, people were saying about the, the Russians there. The Russians were shit. I know they, well, they weren't for us. They were for us, supposedly not at other points in their career, but this is a best, it best, best players 11, non English, non UK. I might do a worst. We could do a worst. We'll be all fucking night if we did a worst. That'd be a three hour live stream instead of an hour and 10 minutes. So come on, you've all called for a manager, and now I'm calling on you to find me a manager, a non English or UK. A foreign mill manager. I don't think we've ever had one. <laughs> mill KP looks like a manager. Um, Billy Barnes was Ukrainian. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't think we've had one. I'll tell you what a, a manager we did have. I mean, it was before the bracket allowed, but I'll allow it on a manager. Um, but I don't think, I think he was English, but I, I know his name is George Petchy. That sounds a little bit, Foreign gin, doesn't it? It don't sound English, is that it right? Um, yeah, but you can't, you can't, Mark McGee can't have it because he's Scottish, unfortunately. Um, yeah, Steve Lee says Billy Bond's worst manager ever. And I'm not sure I agree, Steve, because again, that was at a time I was, I was a teenager around that time, you just knew the hatred for him because he was from West Ham, but um. Players I spoke to in the Lions lounges from that era liked him, thought he was a great manager, just that, that West Ham thing hanging over him. Um, yeah, people are saying they want to pick a manager. But, you, you know, we, we haven't got a foreign manager, so it's difficult. Um, we need to just maybe pick geographically the furthest away manager from fucking Bermondsey, see if it works like that. But, yeah, I don't know. It hasn't... It hasn't um, Peter Anderson was the worst manager ever, says Lee Miller. I, I don't the first the first Mill manager I actually remember. Um, although, although it would have been George Graham when I was very first going, um, it wasn't uh, one I, one I first remember. The first one I remember is John Dot is the Doc. So that's what, when I really properly remember going is is when it was the Doc. But I would have gone um, George Graham. I remember my first ever first ever game. Remember it at the, the old den. Used to love it. My old man used to drive down, um, do it right onto the Alderton Road, then right again under the arch and park up the back there, go in, get some monkey nuts. We're going by the Alderton Road behind the goal there and then walk round the side, like the raised bit, round the side to the halfway. And then back behind the Alderton Road. We walked to the halfway for the first half, but as far to the cold blow as we could get before you got cut off by the, um, like the family bit where the seats went in a couple of years later. Steve O'Massey was German. <coughs> but listen, everyone's this is a good team. This is a good team. I don't think this I don't think this team deserves to be managed by a bad manager. I'm looking at the team thinking who managed the most players in this team. That's what I was thinking. Keller was managed by 
uh, Mick McCarthy. Muscat was managed by Dennis Wise. Danny Shitu would have been managed by Kenny Jacket. Whitbread would have been Jacket. Larry would have been Jacket. Paul Ifill would have been um, Mark McGee. And then shortly, Dennis Wise. Abdu would have been Jacket. Lucas Neil McGee. Uh, before that, Rhino McCleary. Kinne McGee. Kayil McGee. Chris Wood. Jacket. Uh, I think um, I think we're going to give it to Kenny, King Kenny, not King KP. We're going to give it to um, we're going to give it to Kenny Jacket, the manager, based on the process, the thought process of he managed most of the players in that team. And I'm telling you what, I love Kenny Jacket as a manager. He did run his course with Kenny, and towards the end, I felt he bought a few players and left us. Um, left with a few players on contracts that weren't very good. Um, but yes, Kenny Jacket, someone said Kenny is English. Yes, Kenny Jacket is English, but we can't find because Mill have never had a foreign manager. Uh, Lewis, L- Lewis Harley correctly says you should have had John Berylson because he's the owner. Um, but I think that team, Keller in goal, Muscat right back, Larry left back, Danny Shitu and Zach Whitbread, central mid defence, Jimmy Abdu and Lucas Neal, central midfield, with Kinna on the left, Ifill on the right, and Tim Cale behind Wood, with Dave Mitchell, and they said Billy Mitchell there, Dave Mitchell, Bart Balkowski, Mark Birch and Marlon Romeo, and Danny Salmon on the bench. I think we give it, I think we make the manager, Kenny Jacket, on the basis of he managed the most of those players. And we haven't got a foreign one. There you go. Grassroots Football TV says Kenny sold all the youth prospects and stumbled through the loan market. Um, it's a good point. And people do seem to forget that Neil Harris was the one that brought back the um, academy. Um, so credit to Harris for that because Kenny Jacket did away with it. And I think it got us promoted and it'll always be respected by me all fans, but I think he gets sometimes a bit too much credit he should. Kenny Jacket. So, yeah, listen, Kenny Jacket is not um, he's not a foreign manager. We know that, but I love the way we're taking this so seriously. That's good. That would be an interesting one, though, wouldn't it? By the way, think about that. A foreign Millwall manager. Do you think you'll ever see the day that could happen? Do you think you'll ever see the day that will happen? A Millwall, a foreign Millwall manager. That's a good question. No, I don't think I don't think it'll happen. Reasons why we've never had a foreign manager. That's a good question. I think really the reason, the main reason I would say comes to my mind is that Premier Premier League managers are predominantly foreign managers that come over for big money and try and make their way in the game. But um Millwall obviously Championship slash League One club. I don't think we'd ever have the the attraction for a for a top Premiership foreign manager. Archie C said Lomas was born in Hanover in Germany. I've been to Hanover in Germany on the way to the World Cup. It's a lovely lovely little place. Um, but listen, Steve Lomas is not fucking getting hold of this team. This this team would do bits in a Prem. I'm backing this team. All these players in their prime to uh, to do well to do well. Right, it's an hour and fifteen minutes long. It wasn't the two-hour dream that we had when we did the worst ever 11, but um, I've had enough. There's some cold logs in the fridge. My son's sitting over there, and we're going to go and watch a nice film because tomorrow, from tomorrow, it is all systems go again on Lions TV. Not that I've ever really fucking stopped, to be honest, through lockdown. I've, I've been like an absolute machine pumping out content for fun because that's what I do. By the way, on that subject, if you have not voted for us yet to win this year's Football Content Awards, I'll put the dis- link in the description below. You've only got five days left to vote. We won it last year, and I will be fucked if I am giving up my title without a serious fight. So I, I, I will, I'll do everything I can to win that. So you can vote for us. You can vote for us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. If you vote for us on Instagram, you can also vote for us. You can vote twice. Vote 10, 10 times. Just swamp the fucker. Let's vote. And if we do the double, I'll fucking throw a party and invite you, I promise you. But I will, I will move fucking heaven and earth to make sure I win it. Um... B Lion says you should win it again this year for them lockdown lounges. And I'm going to be honest, mate. I really appreciate you saying that. But I'll be honest, and it might sound beginning. I think you're right. I think you're right because I've never been good at much in my life. But I'm good at this, and no one fucking works harder than I do. So please, 
vote for me because I deserve to win this and I, I will do everything in my power to make sure that happens. So, Steve Lee says, Dan, thanks again for the Malcolm Allen interview. I was devastated because in the middle of me saying I'm good at what I do and asking you to vote for me in the fucking Football Content Awards, I lost the file to Malcolm Allen. I had the file. I interview all the ex-players on Skype. I don't use... I don't use fucking Zoom. I don't trust it. With Skype, it saves very easily. It's there. And with Skype, you're always on a two-shot as well. And I think it's good to see both people so you can play off the reactions. John Goodman said, I've only got Zoom. And Malcolm Allen said, I've only got Zoom. So obviously you've got to accommodate these people. And I'm not saying it's their fault. But um, I did it with John Goodman. File saved. Put the video out. But it cuts between the two people. And I just don't like it as much. Just the format of it. Uh, Malcolm Allen was brilliant. Did it. Saved on my computer. I put clips out that night of him singing Mill songs in Welsh and of him, his Mill memories. I woke up the next day and the fucking file was gone, vanished. Wasn't anywhere to be seen on my computer. Um, Zoom was saying the files didn't exist and I was absolutely devastated. I, I could have cried, honestly, that, that I fucking Malcolm Allen's given me his time and did that and I fucking lost the file. And I, it wasn't me. I know what I'm doing. I got it down to a T. So I'll never use Zoom again. So we'll be going back to Tuesday interviewing Kenny Cunningham on um, on Lions Lounge Lockdown, episode 17. They will continue the lockdown interviews. We've got some big ones planned, some very, very big ones, the biggest ones you'll ever see. Two massive, biggest mule legends ever. Not Tim Cale, because he's don't like to answer messages or anything, Tim Cale, but I think two people below Tim Cale, directly below, biggest legends, have agreed to do it. One of them's been our manager recently. He's agreed to do it, but it's just not at a minute. So, um it's going to be good when it does happen. When it does happen, it's going to it's going to happen. Um, so they'll keep going out in the Lions Lounge lockdowns. And this week, Kenny Cunningham Tuesday, which means I'll get that video out Wednesday. So I'll probably film the pre-match prediction tomorrow, but you won't get that till Thursday. So from your viewing point, Wednesday, Kenny Cunningham Lions Lounge lockdown will be out. Thursday, pre-match prediction and fan score predictions. Uh, Friday, I might do a little live stream prior to the games kicking off. Saturday, boom. All systems go. Love it. Can't wait. Nine games to go. Potentially 12. Thanks for watching, everyone. We'll do another one of these next week. Let me know in the comments below what you want to do next week, whether it be the worst non-UK players, the Paddy Power, Mill 11. Um, let me know what you, want, what you want to do. And we'll make things happen because that's what we do. We make dreams come true. Well, not dreams, but we get you through a couple of hours of lockdown a night, hopefully. Please subscribe to Lions TV. Football is back. Come on, you Lions. Thank <laughs> you.